Guys, so get this. A woman was found floating face down in the ocean. A total mystery. Because the night before the body was found, this woman who happens to be terrified of water and also couldn't swim, just so happened to be on a dinghy boat with her husband and her lover. Now, what could have possibly happened here? Oh, and did I mention that this story is about one of the most famous Hollywood actresses of all time? This is the story of Natalie Wood. Now at birth, she was given the name Natalia Nikolaevna Zakarenko. Now I wish I took a year of Russian because I didn't know how to pronounce that. Natalia's mother Maria had a fortune teller once say that her second child would be a great beauty known throughout the world. She then added that Maria must beware of dark water. Remember this for later. And Natalia started acting when she was only four years old, which is when the studio execs changed her name to Natalie Wood. That makes sense because that's a lot easier to pronounce. At the age of eight, Natalie starred in The Miracle on 34th Street, where she won over America's heart. And then from then on, she went to lead on a very successful acting career. She was most popular in her starring roles in Rebel Without a Cause, Splendor in the Grass, and West Side Story. We all know how that one turned out. Due to her contract, Natalie was sometimes forced to work on movies that she didn't really want to. Her mother also pressured her to take on some of those roles. Is it a requirement for all celebrities to have a momager? See what I did there? Momager, manager? Hmm. So aside from her acting career, Natalie was known for having a super intricate love life. Her past lovers include Dennis Hopper, Elvis Presley, Warren Beatty, and Michael Caine, and many more. In 1957, she married actor Robert Wagner. Now onto the juicy part of the story. On November 28th, 1981, Natalie took a weekend trip to Catalina Island on her husband's 55-foot yacht. Splendor, that's a big yacht. Now this trip was around the same time she was filming the movie Brainstorm. She went with her husband Robert, Brainstorm co-star, Christopher Walken, you know, Christopher Walken, and the boat's captain, Dennis. That evening, Natalie, Robert, and Christopher got off the boat for a fancy dinner on Catalina Island. Why was I invited? They returned to the Splendor at around 10 p.m. on Robert's day. The three actors were reported really drunk upon their return. I mean, who wouldn't drink at a fancy dinner? Once they were back on, Natalie went to her and Robert's cabin for the evening. Meanwhile, Robert and Christopher reportedly had an argument. After he calmed down, Robert headed to the cabin, but Natalie was nowhere to be found. The dinghy was also missing. Robert radioed for help. Harbor Patrol, private rescuers, and even the Coast Guard conducted a search along the coastline. But the next morning, Natalie's body was found floating face down about a mile away from the yacht. The dinghy was found near Natalie's body. In the autopsy, medical examiners found evidence of alcohol, painkillers, and motion sickness medication in her system. Her skin was also visibly bruised. Natalie's passing was ruled an accident. That doesn't sound like an accident. It was theorized that Natalie tried to secure the dinghy to keep it from hitting the boat when she fell in the water. A funeral was held for Natalie days later. Now, a bunch of celebrities were there, even Frank Sinatra, Lawrence Olivier, Elizabeth Taylor, and Leah Kazan were a few of the funeral attendees. Man, she knew some people. But something about Natalie's passing just did not seem right. Now, the Splendor Captain, Dennis, went on to co-write a book about the mysterious evening. In the book, he revealed information about the incident that he never told investigators. Now, I guess that's one way to sell books, but that seems a little sketchy. According to Dennis, Natalie and Robert's argument started one day earlier, and it was super tense between them all weekend. Robert was jealous of Christopher and Natalie's relationship. I know I would. I mean, it's Christopher Walken we're talking about. The evening of Natalie's disappearance, Christopher and Natalie were seen flirting with each other at a bar on Catalina Island before Robert joined. When Robert showed up, he was really upset. The group continued on to have dinner at a restaurant where one of the employees claimed that a glass was thrown at a wall either by Robert or Christopher. That seems tense. 
Now they returned to the yacht and continued drinking wine. Then one thing led to another, and there was a heated argument where Robert broke a bottle of wine and accused Christopher of trying to sleep with his wife. Whoa, that's gnarly. So Christopher ended up going to his room for the evening, called it a night. Robert and Natalie continued to fight until silence. Moments later, Dennis went on to check the situation and found Robert by himself. Robert told Dennis that Natalie was missing and asked him to help look for her. But after Dennis had no luck finding Natalie, he met back up with Robert and told him that the dinghy was gone. Dennis doubted that she would have gone out on the small boat by herself since she was deathly afraid of water. I mean, why would anyone do that? If I was afraid of water, I wouldn't be out on a boat by myself in the middle of the ocean. So new witnesses came forth claiming that they heard a woman trying to call for help that evening from their boats saying, someone, someone please help me, I'm drowning. Natalie's sister Lana also came forward. She claimed that her sister couldn't swim and has been terrified of water her whole life. So it wouldn't make sense that she would just take out the dinghy by herself. In 2011, Natalie's case was reopened. 30 years later, in 2012, the official cause of Natalie's passing was changed from an accident to undetermined. Ooh. One year later, the coroner's office made an addendum to Natalie's autopsy report. Like they changed that thing up. It stated that Natalie may have sustained some bruises before going in the water. However, the claim was also not solid evidence because she was on medication that made her prone to bruising. So that's confusing. Now investigators attempted to interview Robert as a person of interest at least 10 times, like 10 times. He or his lawyer turned them down each time. Now his memoir, Robert said he believed Natalie was either trying to escape their argument or tie the dinghy, but whatever happened was an accident. That's what I would say if I did it. Robert and Natalie's daughter, Courtney, publicly expressed that her support for her father. Now, I know that I wouldn't want to be in the daughter's shoes. So as of now, there are no more advancements have been made in Natalie's case. Okay, but seriously, I am still shook that the fortune teller that Natalie's mom went to predicted this whole thing all along. And maybe that's why Natalie was afraid of water this whole time. But what if that was the case? Why would she ever go out on a boat to begin with? Now who knows? Maybe Dennis will suddenly think of a, more details for a sequel in his next book. Now that is something that I'd be willing to read. Until then, stay away from dark water. But also, enjoy the taco salad. And thanks for watching.